Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I'm a big superhero nerd geek. I've said this in plenty of my podcasts. I roleplay superhero characters. I've done it for like 30-something years. And I was really captivated by the first Shazam! movie. And when I think back on the consistency of Marvel and some of the stuff I really love about those movies and re-watching them, I fit Shazam as my DC movies in that rotation. Like, And I can get some of the criticism about the movie. And I enjoy it and I have a lot of fun. I had a lot of high hopes coming into this movie and I avoided, like I normally try to do, most things online and watch the trailer or two and i didn't have super high hopes for it in in that case you know in that sense but shazam fury of the gods is a good movie i think i don't know what it is and maybe it has to do with like the problems like the wb has with their shows or there's a certain amount of stuff they want to put in and look marvel has the formula down if people can say it's you know being getting tired and they try to mix it up with different type of movies shazam tonally is fine like i i, te I teared up on the first movie because to me shazam is one of the first superheroes i ever connected with it's the first time i could ever remember lucid dreaming was i was a kid and i watched the tv show shazam so much that i had a dream and my friends were getting beat up. There was like a riot in the streets. Like I, I wasn't, you know, this is all recollection of a dream. And I said Shazam and turned into Shazam. And it was a fight. And to me, that connection, that magic will always, you know, enamor me and keep me connected to a character like Shazam. For instance, I've gone through so many iterations of his in the comics. Well, before I stopped collecting. So I really enjoy the character. I like this um, you know, the difference between it's an eight-year-old kid who gets this power and he says Shazam, he turns into a Superman-like character. It always appealed to me as a kid and what could, what could happen in, you know, the world of comic books and the Marvel family. So, one of the little things about the movie is, you know, what's his name? Now, I thought they were really going to commit to Captain Marvel because, like, that's what, there was a lawsuit back in the day and he, that's what he was in the comics. I thought they were going to do a play on that, but they didn't. I love the Marvel family in, in, in that sense of what they represented in the comics for the time. And thinking back as a kid, the first comics I read, you know, whether it was Spider-Man, it was probably mostly DC because I have a brother who's older, a year or two older than me. And I think it filtered down to me. And I had a grandfather who had a, um, you know, a, comic books not a comic book it's like a newsstand in the uh term in the market anyway i enjoyed this movie but a part of me is saying this could have been a great movie and i think it's hard for me to balance that like my hopes my joy my connection to my childhood uh the magic of comic books and the world of superheroes which is so dear to me and i if it was up to me, I'd be playing every day. I'd be getting friends, and we'd do, be doing adventures. And I find this movie a fun, and I, I, I good. I enjoyed it. So I can't say it was really a good movie, but it has the elements of being great in that sense, where you could, I don't know if it's trim it down, move things around. Uh, maybe maybe I get my friend every once in a while to do a podcast. He's more of um, the filmmaker. Uh, he has a channel one day when um, he deals with his evil children. <laughs> Any case, uh, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, again, I have fun watching it. A couple of times it really moved me. The music and the connection of how they use it is really impactful and done well. And even subpar CGI, which should not be happening these days with a DC budget movie. You know, you forgive those things for, you know, good writing and 
the chemistry and how, how the plot progresses again with the CW shows you got um, some amazing actors and actresses on these shows that are just filler episodes that take up 22 episode seasons and you know where do you balance this out and you got subpar characters in here and I mean you know side characters in a sense like the mother and the father and it works in this movie but it never works enough there are moments of connecting to your childhood and being a teenager or being young and the quirkiness of it the, you know it works and i think my problem with this movie and not gushing over it is we have villains that I, I didn't really know where it was going. So you have the daughters of a Titan and Atlas, and it feels muddied. It, it, I don't know. When, when I watch like Ant-Man, like the new Quantumania, Paul Rudd is irreverent, and he's always cracking jokes. The tonal shifts in the movie are up and down because you have a villain who's supposed to be dangerous, and... I think this movie just misses the mark on that type of thing because to me, Loki represents that in the Marvel Universe and maybe the best. Oh, well, you have a high caliber actor, fits the character, and, and it works on a level that elevates things around it. And I think that's lacking in this movie. And Lucy Liu I love, uh, Helen Mirren, even the girl was playing uh, Athena, or uh, and it just feels like it's just missing the mark. And I don't know if it's high talented editors come in because again, the music like you, you get the swells and the feels when you're supposed to. And for that, I'm going to give it a lot of credit. But I find myself in a weird place of you know being in such a good place mentally. You know, I'm so looking forward to having this so much fun with Shazam again my connection my comic books my role playing in superheroes my con you know understanding of Shazam from the TV show and yes I will give them credit for putting in a cameo from the original guy kid who played Billy Batson in the TV show kudos for that I saw it I knew it right away and Giving a little tease about um, a dream uh, Billy has. Uh, spoilers here. I'm going to give more credit for putting Wonder Woman at the end. Mid-credit scene, whatever you call that. So, um, there are elements that I truly smile and I enjoy. This is a movie. I don't know if I will put it in the same category as watching the first one. No, that might be normal in a general sense with almost every movie, right? When you kind of think about it, like, I love Jaws 2, but Jaws 1 is that classic. And is this that Jaws 2, or is it The Empire Strikes Back? No. Um, I don't know if you can be in this day and age. I just feel you have the talent, the money. My, my instincts just tell me it comes down to how the movie's put together and put out so maybe like again uh, you know I see it in more movies that are bad and where an editor can come in and you know tries to do the best and good at his craft and someone cutting out stuff and trimming it because I don't know if this movie's technically long it felt kind of long and it's you know it's got some themes in here that I really connected with and I liked but it doesn't feel like there's enough of it or they com don't commit to it enough. I have, you know, a little bit of a nitpick with just how, you know, irreverent Shazam could be is, you know, and they give, make a, they allude to like the wisdom of Solomon. And I think there were times where he should be more stoic and reserved in a sense. And maybe that is the growth of these movies. Because, you know, even when he changes back now to um, young Billy, uh, they're getting older, right? I think in the movie they say 
He's going to be 18. Oh, he says he's going to be 18 because well, he says that to Wonder Woman. He's hitting on her at the end, which was cute. And But in the comics, you'll always get that he's a child, like an eight-year-old. And, you know, in the comics, it's, you know, you don't age like that. So, although they have done iterations of it, you, you know, so I, I can see that. But if, you, if you're going to take that, ride these characters, look, they're good, good, borderline great. I don't know. I don't know them well enough. But it work, they work. All the Marvel family works. Um, some good writing here and there that just seems to fall short when it comes to the villain and the plot motivations in this movie. Uh, and, you know, that could be something, a staple of superhero movies in general. How the villain, and I'll draw back to Loki again from the Marvel Universe, um, where you just maybe get lightning in a bottle. You have a superb actor, fits the role. And again, like elevating things, and you you could have an actress like Helen Mirren elevate this movie. It doesn't feel like there's enough. If you cut things out, add things, maybe the stuff on the cutting room floor, maybe that's the balance here. But again, if this is a two-hour movie, um, you know, two-hour, twenty-minute movie, it feels, you know, like the the roller coaster ride was a little bumpy. It didn't have a, the right ebbs and flows to it. Again, though, uh, I really have a connection to Shazam in my childhood, and this whole superhero thing is just up my alley, if it's not, you know, medieval Forgotten Realms stuff, or which is kind of a little scary, because I'm a little worried about the Dungeons and Dragons movie. We haven't really had good uh, representation, although I get a kick out of some of the other movies that they've made. And DC's in that spot right now where... Um, you got new people coming in, you know, Henry Cavill's out, supposedly Gail Gadot is out, which is one woman's in this fucking movie, so come on already, just, just get your shit together. Where do they see this going to, and uh, as I'm watching it, I always foresaw, like, in my head, um, moments where it could have really shifted into a fun, exciting um, Robin, sometimes it was just a little too long. There's a, a scene that, um, uh, you know, how the acts go, you know, they almost win, but then they lose, and it's almost the end of the earth, and this tree comes out and is mutating things, and creatures are coming out, like Cyclops, and, you know, griffins, and whatever the fuck. And they had this scene where they highlight, like, one woman, particularly, and it's, it's, it just felt a little too long as it stands out to me when things are going on around everybody. And I just felt like this balance of juggling all these things in a movie where you do have five characters at the Marvel family you're trying to focus on. You've got the foster family, parents, um, school stuff, uh, general life stuff, because in this movie it's you know a couple of years after. They're called, like, the Philadelphia something, like, um, you know, Misfits or something. Uh, Misfits is actually another TV show, uh, superhero show. But there's just elements of this that feel like they're either not drawn out enough and not compact enough. Um, again, the Marvel family, like, some of the characters, I, I, you... you you want to get to know some of them more. They're actually pretty good, even as kids. So again, you have five adult superheroes they turn into, and you have the five kids who are getting older. And it, it, it's that it's got to be hard. And the first movie, the first Shazam movie, I thought had a better balance of that. And this could be the direction they're going, but when you say you're getting rid of Henry Cavill, Gail Gadot, and you put her in the end of this movie... Like, what are you telling the fans? Like, because this should have been, without a doubt, a teaser for Black Adam. I don't give a fuck about behind the scenes shit. There is a balance between profit and giving fans what they want because they'll come back and, you know, reinvest in you. And look at the Snyderverse, which I don't fucking like. You're committed fans and they love some of that stuff. So. You know, what I would have done is commit to it. Make that fourth movie, have your plan, 
but you have to tease The Rock, Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam with Shazam. The fact that these are not connected is a crime. I said it when I watched the, the Black Adam review. What the fuck are you doing putting Henry Cavill in there as a fucking end credit scene to motivate and jumpstart the bullshit that you said Henry Cavill was coming back and he they 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 booted him and he had to come to the fans so you know I'm not back at Superman. It was so fucking bullshit. When why it should have been Shazam? There's no fucking way that that should have happened. And I think it's an indication of these uh, movies looking to be put out and the care of the editing and the flow is not concerned to them. Because like I said, I don't think this is a bad fucking horror. It's not a horrible movie. I think it's a good movie and I enjoy it. But then again, I, you know, I've said this a million times now. Green Lantern, I watch that movie all the fucking time. And I don't think that's a good movie. And again, this is a big connection to me. It, it resonates with me a lot. Like, you know, some of the bigger names you might know from comic books. Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. But Shazam is up there for me. Again, my first lucid dream. I, mean, I was a little kid. I was always living in my mind anyway. You know, sort of introvert in that sense. And it wasn't Spider-Man or Batman or, you know, Superman that I remember my first controlled dream with. And it was Shazam. And I watched all the old TV shows, even the ISIS show and whatever, Danger Girl. It was like things I would watch and you forgave some of the stuff. And that's part of this too. I'm not going to be surprised if people are shitting on this movie in a general sense. Like, you know. Oh, it's a fun mess, and there's another thing people are going to say, you know, it's not fun. And, you know, again, there is some teenage stuff that does resonate with you when you were a kid in that sense, and the actors are doing it really well. And you've got the supporting cast, like, uh, uh, you know, you got five kids, teenagers, let's go, whatever, and they have to do their thing with the foster parents, and you've got them as superhero versions, they do that really well with the, you know, child actor, again, child, but, you know, kid actor and the adult. So I imagine there's a lot to do to get these movies to work. And maybe I'm giving a little, you know, benefit for that because, again, I'm connected, I love, and I'm a geek. This is all part of my fucking, you know, this is right up my alley. The first movie moved me in a way, you know, that I so enjoyed. We talk, I talk with my friends about it. And the first one made a mistake with using the first villain. You should have made these deals from the beginning and had the teasers for Black Adam. And I don't give a shit about how well it did or, or performed. Sometimes you just commit to the movies. Look, look at the original Christopher Reeve Superman movies. One and two people will defend. And they will talk about certain cuts of the movie the Donner cut, this and that. And it's so riddled with, you know, character scenes that it wouldn't even hold up today, I don't think, in that sense. But when people think of Superman 3 and 4, it doesn't, you know, resonate well, but it doesn't ruin and tarnish like what Christopher Reeve did. And I think maybe when you're given you know, an audience, some of what they want, you're having fun, and the, you get the same director, right? Um, it, it, the love's gonna come through. I think that's here. So let me see. You got directed by David F. Sandberg, written by Henry Gaden, Chris Morgan. Uh, I think it's the same director. Um, maybe one of the same writers, that type of thing. You know, it's good to have this cohesiveness. Um, and in the first movie, I think they handled, dare I say, the villain better and his gargoyle demon type things. It had a more um, you know, focused angle on, on certain things where, although, you know, it resonates with me with, um, you know, the character having a little crush on certain things, a little love interest, you know, I don't want to say, they're fucking kids, teenagers, but, you know, there's that connection that forms and 
some of the elements and the places they find themselves, I think that is connected to the people who did the first movie coming in. But I don't know. I, I find myself a little confused with, you know, where my state of mind is in some of these movies because, you know, I don't do the, I mean, maybe I, maybe I should just do it if I don't, even if I don't put them out. But I actually break down the movie and go through parts. And maybe I would even reveal things about myself that I don't really know because it helps in that way. But going through, like, sections of the movie and stopping it and you know reevaluating you know what it, what the movie's trying to make me feel while it's because again i'll go i'll say it again from the beginning the music seems good and seems to swell when it needs to um you know the kid actors although they're getting older they work there's a couple of fucking lines in here that make you roll your eyes so hard but it gives you that feeling like there's a loving, I don't give a fuck feeling about it, which was like something about like Ant-Man that I enjoyed. And um, there's a fucking, right, when the monsters come out in the third act or whatever and everything looks bad and the tree is popping up and pods opening up with Cyclops and, you know, fucking every... D and D character villain monsters popping all over the city, and they need to defeat them. And fucking Shazam, because they all lost their powers except for fucking the main Shazam. And he says, "Look, you got to distract them, get them fuck out of here. I'm gonna go take care of the dragon." Because there's a fucking dragon in this movie. Uh, weird, it looks like a Dracolic mostly, but and it's it's not like consistent in what it can do anyway. And he, he tells him, you know, going and. They talk about how they have a magical pen, okay? You know, some of these things are really cute in the movie, but you got to deal with some of the kids, and it, it, it actually works. So, you got a magical pen, they ask the questions, and it writes out answers, and one of them is like Ambrosia. So, they have to fucking corral these beasts and somehow defeat them or whatever, and because uh, they rescued the wizard, he's like, you know, the most the, I, you got to get the most powerful one, and it happens to be a unicorn, and the little girl in the movie is like, oh, I love unicorns. Anyway, I'm fucking almost rambling, but you get to this fucking scene where there's this den of uh, a, a unicorns in there, you know, in the shadow, they're playing it, like, you don't, you don't see it. And the thing starts charging the little girl, and she just throws Skittles up, and they do this slow-mo for way too long, and she's got this fucking dumb smile on your, her face, but it's it, it, it's endearing like you find yourself like I could see a little kid just fucking bugging out like this and then she says taste the rainbow because it's fucking skittles and I wanted to smash something but I giggled anyway they do a call back to this so as the as the unicorn you know, eats the Skittles and it's like ambrosia because that's the closest thing we have to ambrosia, honey, so sweet. Anyway, um, th she connects with it, the young girl, and, and it gives like a a horn or it makes a sound, and a bunch of other come and Mary Marvel, whatever the fuck her name is, says we're gonna need a lot more Skittles. Funny, right? Yeah, and then. To get rid of the monsters, they ride the unicorns because they have no powers. Because it was the staff that he broke in the first fucking movie. Anyway, and they're charging on these fucking uh, unicorns. And by the way, you can impale a cyclops with a unicorn, show no blood. But, it, you know, tonally it should have been more dangerous for the villains and what they were doing. It Anyway, so the little girl's like... Taste the rainbow, motherfucker, and then they, they cut to it. You know, look, you fucking had a promo for Skittles, and this isn't one of those I think Skittles put their product placement. It just happened to be like funny, and to have that one little girl because she's I think she's the youngest of them, and she's um, it just worked for me in in that sense. And again, a couple times I felt the feels, but as I get towards the end of this podcast. There's something in me that's not screaming for people to watch it. To like, to go, like, this is, a, you know, a, um, a breakthrough or, you know, breaks new ground. 
I think I could call back to like Captain it was a Civil War from Marvel where there was a shift there where they were running some tonal shifts and still trying to keep some of the comedy there, but you know, Tony's parents are dead and you find out it's fucking Bucky and the villains p- pitting them together in that fight at the end, the big fight with uh, the airplane at airport. You don't feel the moments like that in this, and I think there's a missed opportunities. Because you could have had this planned out from the beginning properly with Black Adam. Because let's say I agree that your first villain from the first movie was kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's proper in the comics that the first villain in the comics was that guy, Dr. Something. And, you know, he taps into the evil versions of the powers that power Shazam, that type of thing. And, okay, so fine. If you're going to do this as a second movie and have Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu and the young girl as the other daughter, it should have always been peppered with Black Adam somewhere in the background. And I think you just screw yourselves over. I don't think people are ready for a Snyder verse to end and a whatever verse to end. Who was the other verse? How would you say the other um I don't know, whatever, the, you know, when they tried to make it lighter, bring in Josh Whedon to redo Justice League, which is fucking better, and the the general sense of, oh, Wonder Woman's fucking outfit has color, holy shit, and Superman, he's joking and smiling, and that's gone too, and you want everybody to invest in what, like, what investment are people going to have with the general burnout of superhero movies, quote-unquote, because I think that's bullshit, but I can see that, I can kind of understand where I tell somebody, oh yeah, you like the first Shazam? Yeah, watch this, you give it a try. And they'll watch and I'll go, yeah, yeah, you know. I just, you know, again, see these moments in my head as they're coming up in the movie and watching it, you know, one time in a movie theater or something is a little different when you're with your friends or, you know, your, your girlfriend or whatever. And then when do you watch it again? And is it you know, what's going on in your life and all that stuff, but I'm a little perplexed that I didn't, I don't have so much joy and glee for this movie as I should. So, you know, you've got the actors, and who's that guy who plays, uh, the main, uh, Billy Batson, Zachary Levy. I mean, uh, he's, he's still, like, not my guy I would have picked, but You are trying to display and convey that they're kids in superhero bodies. So, you know, his humor, his portrayal, you know, I'm fine with it. I just think when you have the villains in the movie, they are the weak link in this. And the uh, human characterization is fine and is probably the stronger point to this movie where you can save on budget and spectacular, you know, bombastic stuff on the screen by having a really cool moment with Freddy and uh, the girl or, you know, Billy and, you know, his foster parents. And these elements work. You know, I think of the Sam Raimi movies with, um, you know, Tobey Maguire and, you know, Aunt May. And you don't need huge drawn-out things. The Superman movies with... You know, Bailey the Martha and whatever are in it, and it it works. And Man of Steel is a fucking garbage mess. Over the last forty minutes of that movie, or a fucking cartoon dream, as they fucking destroyed the uni- the world of Metropolis. You know, this movie has enough of it that I would recommend. It. I think it's fun. It's going to give you um, most of the same vibes you got from the first one. Because it's going to keep that same trend and humor. And I'm not surprised to see it's the same director and partial writer or whatever. You know, I just think uh, there's a, uh, there's something preventing this from being a great movie. And, I, you know, I don't think there's a real super big problem with the movie. Like, you know, again, this is just seeing it real quick. And it's a, you know, like I said, the moment, the night, what you're doing... And you're reflecting on it, and I just want to get this out and wonder why, like, the little kid geek in me is not 
geeking out as much as I did on the first one. And again, that could be just the Jaws, the type thing, but we do recognize elements of why The Empire Strikes Back might be better than the first one, or, um, you know, in that general sense. Like, it happens. This missed the mark in it, but it had the elements that are there. And sometimes I think maybe that could be worse. It could be, not worse, and you know, but in the sense that you have such great elements here. Again, I'll call back to the Flash TV show. The Flash TV show has some of the fucking best portrayals of characters, and um, you connect and love. There's nobody who doesn't love Grant, Gus, whatever his name is, who plays the Flash. Like, But yet they write, the writers for that show are fucking horrible and how they commit to their shit. And I think this movie's trying to break out of the mold here and there. And by having he, Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu, and the young... Because I think the young girl's okay. Because her arc is a little bit of um, confusion. And she is 6,000 years old, whatever. But in the development of, you know, her connection to one of the kids, who, one of the Marvels. And then, you know, seeing that they weren't here to destroy our Earth. They just wanted to come get their shit that they were still stolen from them. Anyway... And this Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu are the issues for me, I think. And I don't know really why, because there's nothing they do wrong in that sense. And, you know, I guess it's, you look at all the elements of this, and it, they come together pretty well. Uh, you know, I, I can't shit on this movie in that way. I just find myself, you know, filing it in my head as in a movie I enjoyed but I'm not rabid for the next one. I'm not, like, um, you know, super excited for what might come next. And again, as I said a couple of minutes ago, there are problems with DC, right? You got a new guy coming in, and, you know, he's taking over. Henry Cavill's out, supposedly Wonder Woman's out. They're committing to the Flash movie. And Ezra Miller's fucking reputation is fucking garbage. So, you know, that's never fucking continuing. Hopefully there's a fucking little cameo in there from the Flash from the TV show. You know, in general, I don't know if my you know knowledge of these things is impacting some of my, um, you know, my passion for it. There's uh, a feeling that I try to just you know level out and let go of. Of you know, what the fuck are you doing, DC? For so long, I've been you know waiting to be fucking. Um, I've been waiting to be amazed and drawn in and I'll grant it Wonder Woman the first one I fucking love that movie and there are other movies that I could you know I enjoy watching the second Wonder Woman movie is fucking not good I have fun watching it and I'll watch it I think this just misses the mark of greatness and again just to look at it in a different way seeing it so quick one time and um, expectations, my joy, my connection to it is all mixed up and missed opportunities maybe. Again, fucking pretty spot on with music and the way it ties into making, you know, oh my god, this is this is happening, you know. And the arc structure is a little fucking wobbly and how the plot develops. But again, there's some real nice connections, real elements for the, you know, the characters who aren't in the forefront too much that makes you feel like they are really connected and th there is an element to um you know my family now you know these are foster kids <clears throat> and you know they put it out right away billy bastion is a kid his parents abandoned him went through like 11 foster homes and there's that element in the comics too where you know, look at our foster care system and what does it do? Not even in America, all over the world. How many times can we look back and, you know, we talk to friends and this and that and they talk about what they went through and, you know, someone will sue them, you know, like for what the system put them through. I'm not saying that element is in this, but you resonate with um, Billy when he's like, I'm holding on too much and 
You know, on what he went through, and again, some of the elements of cuteness with the attachments and what you would go through as a young kid and a teenager, they're there. I'm just going to sum this up as, I like Shazam Fury the Gods. I'm not ecstatic and crazy about it, but I'm trying not to let the predicament DC is in from dampening my hopes of more cool stuff because like I said before The Rock should have been in the teaser I'm sorry, I don't give a fuck how well his movie performed put some hair on him though make him look more like the fucking version I like Black Adam give a fuck what it looks like and going to committing to what the fans want because I think these actors are good enough again is you know, they're charming, they connect, there's a, you know, rhythm to the chemistry there. And this is like a family of foster kids. And it can work. I mean, you need, you just need a solid connection. And I think that, you know, the behind the scenes stuff of what's going on in DC might be, you know, might be uh, you know, tamp- uh, just tempering my excitement. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a shift in people saying... Well, you know what? No, I'll say this is better than the Wonder Woman two, uh, Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. I think, I think so. You know what? Here, here's how fucking crazy this is. The critic in me says this is a better movie than Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four, but I will watch Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four again before I watch this. So that just shows you how fucking just the complexity of how fucking my brain works, I guess. In any case, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, I liked it. If you like the first one, I think you're going to like this. It misses the mark on some greatness here and there, because you have some superb actors and superb actresses. They pull it off, they make it work. I'm invested, you know, when the, when the music tells me to be invested in Because there were a couple of times, was, I'm going to know this is loud. <laughs> like, this was loud, but it's loud, supposed to be loud on purpose, and it's supposed to swell with the right mark. I think people are going to like this movie more than they don't. So, watch Shazam Fury of the Gods. I'll give it a recommendation in that sense. Nothing really super bad about it. Just think it... It just could have been great. And I'll end that here. Have a good... Whatever month we're fucking in with these... How I edit these... This is going to be out soon, I think, so... Wishing you the best... My best to you and yours. Take care, everybody.